everyone, this is Nemesis and today we are going to take a look at the glass cannon maestro. My interpretation and my perspective on how to correctly make a glass cannon maestro build. You know I made, I recently made the ultimate hybrid uh, damage dealing maestro. It was welcomed rather well by the community even though uh, for good reason confusion and confusion related builds aren't used in PvE that much at the moment but still the hybrid build remains um, as a concept for now for PvE remains really good so you might want to check that out but today we are going to take a look at the glass cannon mesmer so we'll start from the top first as always we are going to need some glass cannon weapons and by glass cannon weapons I mean any weapon that does not apply a condition that does an X amount of damage over a period of time so weapons that do direct damage so uh, I'll start with a range weapon this is direct damage this is vulnerability might and direct damage vulnerability we know amplifies the direct damage that can be applied this is Boon stripping also an AoE on 5 targets. This is a phantasm that applies cripple and AoE damage. And this is push uh, knockback and some damage in form of an AoE, AoE wave in front of you. So, this seems to be our one of our power type damage weapons, burst type damage weapons, so greatsword, we are going to use a greatsword. Second weapon, uh, scepter staff applies bleeding burning, no, scepter bolt, mm, damage with block and confusion, not really useful for us, so for a second weapon set we are going to take a look at the sword vulnerability that's good for us really nice power type damage as well as a distortion a blur effect on yourself so this seems even better and vulnerability and cripple as well as the bling forward so and also a combo finisher so this seems to be a really good weapon for the offset but what do we put in the offhand we have sword as an offhand which does really nice amount of damage if you block and the illusion that attacks your foe and this is a combo finisher this illusion does quite a bit of damage so it might be a bit hard to decide between the sword of hand and the pistol of hand pistol create an illusion that unloads its pistol on your foe and the magic bullet damage blind days stun so sword or pistol sword or pistol this great sword has a range of 1200 but the offhand sword this uh, phantasm is uh, actually a melee a melee uh, attacker and this you sort of have to be in the midst of uh, things to get to, to be able to block unless it's a really long range hit that you might dodge anyway so this is also melee let's just go with pistol for now and we'll see what happens so I will skip the slot skills for now because it has uh, a trick a twist to this so I will go straight to the traits we know for direct type damage we need power Sometimes power is team up with condition duration because vulnerability needs to remain on the target for you to be able to benefit from it. So if vulnerability disappears immediately, then you cannot do your combo, your bursting on the target since the vulnerability is gone too fast. This a way of arranging the passive bonuses in trade paths encourages and enables hybrid builds to be to be made like you've seen maybe you have seen the Mesmer hybrid build that I have done hybrid damage build that I have done so we need power critical strike chance and critical strike damage and sometimes condition duration if you want to stack vulnerability 
so we look at domination power condition duration we go down to dueling precision and critical strike damage so this is basically what we need domination and dueling is the bread and butter of a glass cannon type build so let's go through the traits and see what we have inflict three stacks of vulnerability when you interrupt the foe well vulnerability is good for us so maybe we'll get to interrupt the foe in this build i don't know we'll see but if you take a look at the pistol we have days stun. so these two kind of go together um illusions inflict 50 percent more damage uh, a lot of this is uh, this is where I'm it's going to get really controversial and a lot of people will disagree with me because uh, the trend on the forums is in a certain way the trends around the builds are in a certain way and shatter builds are the most popular builds so just for the sake of argument I will not take mind rack that causes 20% more damage I will take empowered illusions illusions inflict 50% more damage just bear with me for, for a little while and we'll get to the bottom of this. So if illusions inflict 50% more damage. Dazing a flow applies 5 stack of vulnerability. Mm, daze. So daze. And if we interrupt, that's quite a bit of vulnerability. Okay, moving on. Deal damage when interrupting a flow. Well, we know we apply vulnerability and we apply more vulnerability when interrupting how about we even do some damage when interrupting a foe and moving on we have five percent increased damage to inactive foes so if we interrupt them and we stun them a bit then not only do we apply vulnerability we apply more vulnerability we do damage while doing that and we have increased damage versus inactive foes and the last ones last uh, major trait would be either 50% chance to cause one second stun when you daze your target or mantras can be activated three times before needing to be channeled again this is where a lot of people stop <clears throat> and they don't take mantras they don't take mantras because they, they take other illusions they try to shatter their illusions but at the same time if you want to be a good glass cannon if you want to be a pure glass cannon if you want to respect the definition of a glass cannon build you kind of have to go maxed in this straight line because otherwise your points will remain to be placed somewhere else and there's like toughness spoon duration vitality healing condition damage and shatter recharge rate condition damage this sort of breaks the definition of a glass cannon so for the sake of argument we are going to hold true to our cause and take mantras can be activated three times before needed to be channeled again or we can take compounding suggestions 50% chance to stun your target whenever you daze them but this is more of a pvp thing because you don't really need to stun your monsters that much in pve since eh, you, you kill them you don't play around with your victims so this is the first trade path but by now some of you might be a little bit um, a little bit hesitant a little bit skeptical skeptical what i said <laughs> about this build so let's move on precision and critical strike damage gain five seconds of vigor on delivering a critical hit this effect can only trigger, trigger every once every five seconds so we get vigor when we crit so we can dodge some more never a bad idea your phantasms have fury uh, phantasm phantasm and we know we have a great sword and a pistol we know we need those so they have fury and they do physical they do power type damage yeah it's good to have fury on the phantasms so increase pistol attack range for you and your illusions reduce the recharge rate of your pistol skills by 20% we use a pistol 
and we know we are going to use the magic bullet a lot because if we interrupt and uh, stun we get increased damage if we interrupt we get vulnerability if we daze we get even more vulnerability so we are going to be using the pistol a lot and since with this straight you go from 900 range to 1200 range which is sort of the same range of the great sword so we kind of have a synergy here between these these two weapon sets moving on your illusions cost 3 seconds of confusion when they are killed again hybrid builds blah blah moving on empowering mantras or give 5 seconds of fury when you interrupt the foe you gain fury yourself or 5% more damage for each radiant mantra mantras 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 people don't like mantras people like to shatter and why would mantras be forced upon you if you want to do a pure glass cannon makes no sense so weird we have mantras that can be activated three times and five percent more damage for each radiant mantra and if you use a mantra then this bonus is gone so mantras are not fun but let's move on we don't need any toughness we don't need any boon duration we don't need any vitality or healing we don't really need condition damage or shatter recharge rate or uh, do we do we shatter do we not shatter i don't know this is confusing let's take a look illusion skills recharge 20 percent faster yeah that's that's fun that's great that's uh, never a bad idea three percent more damage for each one of your active illusions and this is our illusion so whatever you put there will actually increase your damage by three percent and since you can have three of them you have your increased damage by you have your damage increased by nine percent if you get three illusions up so you get three illusions up and you have your damage increased by three percent for each that's nine percent and four percent more damage for each radiant mantra so if you have for example three radiant mantras then your damage will go up by 12 percent with another nine that's 21 percent extra damage 21 percent extra damage for yourself so they these traits seems seem to synergize kind of well with themselves this also means that your slot skills your utility skills should be mantras from from what this build tells us so mantras 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 okay healing skill heal yourself gain additional health for each active illusion okay all of these together kind of tell us that um we shouldn't shatter we should keep our phantasms up so they do damage and a lot of people will be oh man but shattering so much better you do so much damage by shattering okay let's uh let's let's take a look at that for for a moment so for for a demonstration i'm going to take three clones and I'm going to shatter them using mind drag causes 20% more damage so I'm going to shatter three clones on this guy let's see how much damage it does okay that did some damage <laughs> let's take a look again so that did 900 900 and 2000 to 2200 uh, it's um it's not bad but let's take a look again so one two three and we break them well that did quite a bit of damage that's not bad actually not not bad not bad so we use three illusions and now mind rack is on cooldown for 13 seconds you can also increase the critical strike chance of mind rack 
and you can put mind rack on uh, on a far lesser cooldown by going into illusions but at the same time you get condition damage for going into illusions straight line and that's that's actually going into the hybrid build shattering seems to be more for the hybrid build and not shattering seems to be more for the for the glass cannon build but again i'm just saying some stuff that don't really mean much so let's see what my version of a glass cannon build can do watch closely so let's say we get two illusions up one two yeah one two <laughs> that was a bit quick I, I know let me just try again so this guy let's do a one two on him one two um let me find another mob here um let's say this one let me do a one two on him one two <laughs> I've been doing this for a while now, it never gets old. So as you plainly see, the mass, the, the phantasms actually do more damage alive than when you shatter them. When you shatter you do AoE damage, but at the same time to be able to shatter effectively, one, two, and you're gone. To be able to shatter effectively, you need to be. You need to have shatter recharge rate, and for that you need to go into illusions. And when you're going into illusions, you're going to get condition damage that may be used for a condition type build. Uh, so since you're not doing a condition type build and you have power type damage, you do. You you're actually becoming a hybrid, and not only that. If we take a look at just what one illusion can do on let's say this this monster just one as you can see it does one illusion alive does as much as three illusions shatter and the illusion remains alive so this is why I will claim and I will hold true to my claim that in a full berserker glass cannon build you don't shatter you don't shatter no matter what anyone says, for me, and as you have seen proof here, you don't shatter, you do much more damage by not shattering. And yeah, I know, the targets, uh, the illusions die anyway when the target dies, but think about it, you're not always going to be fighting PvE mobs that die from two hits. You're going to be fighting uh, in uh, fractals, in dungeons where elite mobs have much more damage, and you clearly can see that if you can stack three of these illusions then you do a very huge amount of damage so i will put on the screen the calculations because don't get too exciting the damage is not as high as you might think but if you put like a 10 second cooldown you do about 3000 uh, about four five five thousand dps with mine rack and it's an AOE but that's five that's five thousand over ten seconds because you cannot mine rack uh, faster than ten seconds so that's uh, f about twenty five thousand DPS let's say uh, it explodes for five thousand on five targets that's twenty five thousand DPS over ten seconds over ten seconds that's that's a DPS of 2500 which is like a DPS of 2500 it's nothing trust me it's nothing this on the other hand this illusion does as you've seen can do up to 10 uh, can do up to 6 uh, 7k I've done 8k with them so the illusion three of these illusions keep continuing to doing 8k which is already 25,000 K which is the equivalent of shattered illusions at the same time you can do damage with your auto attack from the greatsword 
and the damage is increased by 5%, 4% for each Radiant Mantra and another 3% for each Illusion. So therefore, you have 21% increased damage with your normal auto attack. And even better, you have 1200 range. So you have the ability to daze and stun if you want. You can stun with dazing. You have one daze on guess what you can even days more and more and more from mantras that increase your damage at the same time S at the same time by dazing and interrupting when you stun you have five percent increased damage when you you daze you have five stacks of vulnerability which is basically five percent increased damage and when you interrupt you have three stacks of vulnerability which remains on the target because of the condition duration now you can finally understand why all of these come, how all of these come together and why you do not shatter. You don't shatter. So let's take a look at the gear so you might understand how I have achieved something so high. So the gear is standard Berserker, 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 Berserker. With Ruby Orbs. Instead of your Ruby Orbs you can use Superior Rune of the Eagle. Superior Rune of the Eagle, which will give me another uh, compared six of these, six of these compared to Ruby Orbs. They are a bit expensive as you can see, but uh, you will lose about uh, 120 power and gain about 80, 80 precision extra, which is a, a roughly another 4% critical strike chance. And you think critical strike chance an extra forty, uh, an extra four percent, that would put me around seventy-seven critical strike chance. And seventy-seven critical strike chance isn't that much. But if you think about it, the main source of your damage comes from your illusion, and your illusions have fury. So your your illusions are not at seventy-seven critical strike chance. They are actually at 97 critical strike chance, so your illusions will almost always crit and be at 1200 range. That is the same of, as your greatsword auto attack, so you are the most uh, long range nuker in the game. So now maybe the skill would make even more sense, illusionary wave. Why do you have a wave that would knock back? Well, simply because the objective all will always be to have three duelists up on a target. So if anything gets close to them, you knock them back. So for the cheaper version, you have Berserker armor with Ruby Orbs inside. You have standard Berserker earrings, Berserker fractal back piece, Berzer blah. Berserker necklace, Berserker rings. For the weapons I have superior sigil of generosity just in case my mantras that remove conditions and we all know that good mesmer builds uh, there's a saying like good mesmer builds are vulnerable to conditions uh, not with this mantra and this sigil and superior sigil of perception for 200 uh, an extra 250 precision needed to achieve such a high critical strike chance which will go even higher with bowels of butternut squash soup which is 77 and with the rune I'm actually going to buy the rune I'm going to break the 80 critical strike chance uh, 80 critical strike chance and the phantasms will always crit my phantasms will always crit the great sword has 5% critical strike chance so you have this much critical strike chance as a stat also 3480 power as long as well as 117 critical strike damage so all of this combined yield really spectacular results so you start like this maybe stun if you want and that's gone mob gone for from such a high range you don't even have to worry about anything at all and if you want 
you can get some more stun instead of some more damage so that's the gear <coughs> so uh, the objective in any fight would be there's no complicated rotation it's merely like you are the best long-range nuker for single target as well as one of the best and most effective interrupters because you have one interrupt and three more interrupts that's four interrupts that not only increase your damage in various ways but also do direct damage when you oh fuck there we go also cause a bit of direct damage that scales with power so uh, I have some fractals recorded with this build and I would literally take a mesmer with this build with me in fractals and you all know I mean some of you know that I had a really <laughs> unpleasant experience with mesmers in fractals but trust me if you do if you take this build and you want to be a damage dealer a lot of people think that uh, even I thought that mesmer damage sucks and it actually does suck because most people have full berserker gear and they're squishy and they run shatter builds so if you are this squishy in berserker build you might as well be at 1200 range almost at all times otherwise you're going to get squashed so for uh, for shattering builds to be effective think about it you'd get a clone let me find the monster you want to kill this creature uh, you want to kill this one so I put the clone up like over here and then I make it shatter and the clone goes to the mob and by the time it gets there I would actually do way more damage just by making it stay where it is and continue to do damage it's much safer and it actually does much more damage and as I have demonstrated so if you want to run a shatter build you might as well go for the hybrid because like I said and I keep saying this condition damage mustn't get wasted it needs to be invested in something whenever I make a build I try to use all the elements in the build there mustn't be anything that is wasted so everything you put everything you decide to use needs to be useful for something you, there's uh, no room if you want to build a proper build there's no room for for wasted uh, investments so yeah just to make it a bit more fun I'm going to buy the eagle runes now Shit. Shit. <laughs> just like Charlie Sheen. I don't. I don't know if you know him. Of course, we hang out all the time. Dot night fire. I recognize it, James. Voice dot dot dot, or it's just my imagination. Text D. Say what? Sacred dot night fire. Don't say it out loud. Oh, Jesus. I just, one of my clones just hit for 8k That was awkward. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, panic. Yeah, I think I should go. Otherwise, Queen is gonna kick my ass. Come 
the way! <laughs> but I need entertainment cream. Oh, I can entertain you. <laughs> so many have Please claimed that. To be in person. She's hard to please, I know. <laughs> Shut it, Nemesis. Well done. She doesn't even remember who slept with her last night. Yeah, it was so dark. Well, screw you. I remember screaming a name, but don't know which one. <laughs> which one of my names? <laughs> <laughs> Boris! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a random name. <laughs> Maybe she tried it once. Oh no, they won't hurt the guy's pride, I think. Yeah, if you screamed a girl's name in the middle of an act, <laughs> that would be confusing. <laughs> yeah, it would be awesome. You would go like, who is she? You want to get her? I'm going to make Necromancer, uh, give the Necromancer the ability to apply burning. Burning? Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that the, the fifth skill of the death trap? No, it's a uh, trait related. Yeah, because every class will get uh, a change in their traits. Sure. Yeah. Okay, bitch. I'm the same with the kids. So the final stats are <coughs> 3360 attack, more or less, 81% critical strike chance, more or less, and 130 critical strike damage. Depending if you're going to use uh, runes of the eagle or ruby orbs. Also, the damage, the, m most of your damage comes from the phantasms that have fury, so actually they will have 100% critical strike chance. And it doesn't matter that you have only under 2k armor and about 16-15k health because you are going to be staying at around 1200 range most of the time. Also, this utility can be swapped for the null field or the feedback if required. And of course, time warp or MOA for PvP. I don't really recommend this particular build in World v. World, but it can be really useful, a really strong build in structured pvp if you make a few modifications such as using stun instead of uh, more mantras and other runes of course but i will cover structured pvp with the glass can mesmer in another video so yeah this is my my way of defining the glass scan and mesmer i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful and uh, until next time, enjoy your gaming and have a great day.